Welcome to video number 17, the extruder body. In this video we are just going to cover putting together the actual body portion of the extruder assembly and we will save the rest of the assembly for the next video. The first thing you're going to see me do in the video here is I'm going to go ahead and take the idler for the extruder. I'm going to go and get my screw started and I'm going to go ahead and mount that idler onto the overall extruder body. And uh, for me it was a pretty tight fit with the screw, uh, which is alright. But I'm going to go ahead and begin threading that screw and get that on there before I add the bearing to the idler. Now that I've got the idler mounted onto the body, I'm now going to take my 608 ball bearing and my M8 by 20 millimeter grub screw and I'm going to go ahead and get that fit into the idler. Now more than once I've struggled with this piece in particular, getting it to stick. So I'm taking a pair of pliers and unlike what I'm doing, don't apply pressure to the actual bearing. Uh, I can't see it. Okay, yeah, actually use the pliers and put force on the grub screw itself. And you do it one side at a time, and it should snap into place if you're having any trouble with it. So, make sure we still have full movement of the bearing, and then go ahead and tighten up the rest of the screw uh, for the idler, and we'll get all of that situated. As you can see, I already had my hob bolt fit into my large weight gear. That's because I, I had to use quite a bit of force to get it pushed into the right amount uh, because you don't want the head of the bolt sticking out past the large gear. It also depends on which style of gear you have, but, but yeah, you want to go and get your hob bolt fit into the gear. And once you have that, we can go ahead and start fitting our 608 bearings into position. They're going to be the same size, obviously, as the one that's in the idler, but we need to go and take the other two bearings, and we need to get them fit into the appropriate spots on the extruder body. And these two bearings are going to be the ones that the actual hob to bolt will fit through, and you want them to be flush with the outside of the body. So 
So we have our bearings in place and we push our large gear with the hob bolt into position and we'll do a little bit of twisting. Now you want the groove inside the hobbed bolt. You want it to be lined up with the bearing that's inside the idler. As you can see, once you get the bolt in place, you know, here you are with the groove pretty close, but you wanna, you wanna actually get it tight enough to where the groove is perfectly centered. So it takes a combination of pliers and a wrench for me to get this nylock threaded on all the way because it is a nylock which means it's going to have a lot of resistance when you go to tighten it and it's going to stay tightened um, so it's pretty hard to turn but I found this to be the best way to get it tightened on there and you can actually use the lock nut as a force to pull the the hobbed bolt closer to the center of the groove final step here is going to be taking our M60 long screws and mounting them through the idler and fixing them into the body of the extruder which is going to include us dropping some nuts into the body so that we can actually thread the screw all the way through. Now, as you'll see I'm only using my spring and two washers right now but as you'll see later in the tutorial I actually went back and added some more nuts and and washers and just a bunch of random stuff uh, just to use as spacers so that I could get more tension because it turns out my springs actually weren't quite long enough to put the tension that I needed so I did have to make some adjustments later on you may or may not find yourself in that position but if you do then just add more washers or anything that can work as a spacer but you can also see I'm dropping the nuts into the top of the body and that's going to be what allows us to lock the tensioner springs in place. <laughs> 